Hello, this is Jade the Stone, and welcome to Speed Articles, where I talk about a piece of media that I like and draw some fan art for it. I've done videos on movies and shows that I like. Now it's time to spread some love to another subset of media that I regularly consume, YouTube. And for this Speed Article, I'd like to talk about the crafting YouTuber, Nerdy Crafter. It's been an odd time for the past few months, what with self-isolation and quarantine being the norm, and there's been plenty of time for me to do lots of art and watch lots of YouTube. As an artist myself, I enjoy a large number of art-related channels, and one channel that I've been watching a lot recently has been Nerdy Crafters. Nerdy Crafter, or Jackie, is a YouTuber who has a large variety of craft-related videos. She started out as largely a DIY and craft-making channel, but moved on to making craft kit review videos and doing art challenges. Her personal crafts usually include sculptures or 3D mediums, and she tends to work with polymer clay and resin designs. She tends to like darker and more monstrous designs, with dragons being her primary subject. She'll also take other figurines and recreate them, from thrift store knickknacks to squishy brand toys, she'll turn them into her own creature of darkness. I'm not a 3D artist, so watching the process as she develops these creatures and these creations is really fascinating to me. Her review videos, many of which she does with her sister Sika, include humorous, cynical jabs at poorly designed craft kits. For her lengthier, more in-depth reviews, where she lists the pros and cons of a kit, She'll always start with the cons, because she likes to start with the salt, as she puts it. In her cash or trash videos, she'll try out a number of craft kits and spend her money reviewing them, quote, so you don't have to. Something I like about her reviews is that even though she'll often go into a review with a healthy dose of skepticism, she's not afraid to be proven wrong and will openly display her appreciation and surprise at a good kit. She'll always give credit where credit is due. From an environmental standpoint, I like that she'll point out the presence or lack of environmentally safe products in kits, and whether or not there is potential for material to be wasted. Most importantly, I greatly appreciate that she often judges a product on its integrity and honesty in regards to how it advertises itself, and on delivering what it promises. This is a really cool aspect of her personality that shines through in a lot of her content placing importance on honesty. This, in turn, lets you know that if she has a problem with something, she's definitely going to tell you about it. Additionally, her presentation style always feels pretty genuine and true to her character, so her videos feel like less of a performance than some YouTubers. She'll ramble about certain fandoms she's into, or talk about experiences she's had while reviewing a kit or making a piece of art, which add to the simple charm of her videos. There's not a whole lot of flair to her videos, all having a pretty low production value. It's just her being her, and I really like that. She's probably one of the first YouTubers who I kind of relate with as a person, too. We share similar interests, such as Pokemon and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. She's a teacher, like me. She's a writer and an artist, like I am. And she's even been to Japan, like I have. I very rarely see a YouTuber and think, hey, I feel like if we met, we could get along really well. But I kind of feel that way about Nerdy Crafter. She just seems like a cool person. The final facet of her work that I'd like to highlight is her more community-based art content. She does a couple of things that give back to the community that she is a part of. One is that she will take drawings and artwork from her viewers and turn them into sculptures. Some of these pieces are among my favorite of her work, and it's really interesting to see a piece of work go from 2D to 3D. Additionally, she'll also often do giveaways for her watchers. The other is her series of videos of turning YouTubers into monsters. Due to her darker tastes, turning someone into a monster is the highest compliment she could give, and so she'll take a YouTuber whose content she enjoys and sculpt a creature that fits their personality and overall channel aesthetic. So far, I honestly haven't been aware of the YouTubers she has made monsters out of, but I like how she guides the viewer through her process and her reasoning for her design choices, so even I can understand the artistic decisions being made. And the quality of the pieces that she puts out and the amount of effort she puts into making them reflects her appreciation of the YouTuber she's recreating. 
So for my art today, I'm creating my own monstrous version of Nerdy Crafter. Because as dark and as salty as Nerdy Crafter claims to be, the thing I appreciate most about her channel is her level of integrity and giving out love and appreciation to the community that she is a part of. Despite the salty reviews and the bouts of evil laughter and the waving of sharp pointy things at the camera, I find her channel an oddly positive part of my life right now, and it's been really helpful to me in these uncertain times. I'd like to pass that positivity forward by turning Nerdy Crafter into a creature of darkness of my own, which is the highest compliment that I can give to her. I probably won't be able to be as clear and as concise in my explanation on my design choices as she is, especially since I edit my videos in a different way than she does, but I'll do my best to explain my art choices here. First of all, I thought Nerdy Crafter had to be some sort of dragon type creature since she's all about the dragons. But I didn't want your average lizard-like dragon, so I went with a turtle dragon since she is a fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I made the shell orange because that's her favorite color. I went with a heavily Bulbasaur inspired design since she is almost always wearing a Bulbasaur hat in her videos. I debated a bit on whether to add horns or feathers or something to the head, but I went with a little pointy bump to mimic the shape of her hat in the dork caricature that appears in her review videos. I gave the dragon bird wings instead of your usual bat-like wings as an homage to her parrot angel that appears in many of her videos. And finally, I had our nerdy dragon raining down salt upon the land to fit the salt motif of her channel. Even the banner on the Nerdy Crafter channel says raining down salt on Tuesdays and Fridays, the days she posts videos. Not only that, but she calls her viewers grains, since we are all grains in her salt shaker family. In the end, my Nerdy Crafter creature didn't turn out to be much of a creature of darkness. In fact, it looks like some weird combination of a flying Koopa and a Venusaur, but I still feel like that's very on brand. She's looking like a laid back, but still powerful and very salty dragon. So yeah, that's my take on Nerdy Crafter, both in words and in art. Her videos are fun and engaging, and she has a very specific brand of humor that I enjoy. It feels like a simple art vlog that doesn't come with that almost fake looking high production value of some channels. She's very clear so I can tell what's going on, even if it's a subject that I'm not familiar with, or if I'm doing my own art while watching her videos. A lot of people are turning to online content creators at this time, and I think we should show our appreciation for them. And I really, really appreciate Nerdy Crafter's channel. Thanks so much for watching till the end of the video. What kind of online content are you enjoying lately, YouTube or otherwise? Leave a comment and let me know. If you liked what you saw and you're interested in seeing more of this kind of video, subscribe and hit the like button. To see the artwork I did in the video, the link is in the description. Thanks for watching and have a great day.